splendid statement from a Hall of Famer. I have, I think we've given you a copy of Major League Baseball's drug testing policy. It's in front of you. It's the one with the red tabs. Could you turn to page 11 on there? 11, um, section 9B, discipline. It says, play, it says player test positive for a steroid. First positive, got it? It says first positive test result, a 10-day suspension, or up to a $10,000 fine. Is that a, that a, is that a big step? That, uh, unfortunately, that is not the evidence that was sent to me by Major League Baseball. I have in front of me the penalties for testing positive for steroids are as follows. First offense, 10-day suspension. It doesn't mention anything uh, up to a fine of $10,000. Yeah, or the, the, the no. could be option. Let me, uh, could you turn no to page, page 10 for a second? Page 10. Did they say anything in their letter to you about uh, the name would be disclosed if somebody flunked a test for steroids? Uh, there's no mention of that anywhere here in the... Uh, Let me just note, it says <clears throat> under, on page 10, under section 8A2, um, the results of any prohibited substance testing any disciplinary fines imposed upon the player by the commission shall remain strictly confidential. Um, and it says if a player is, but, and that's on the or. So if they go with a fine, it's d under the way I read this, it's not even public. If they ele instead elect to uh, suspend it, only then will the uh, note that somebody was suspended uh, for a specified number of days for a violation of the program be made public. Uh, is that, again, a, a tough that, policy? That was not uh, sent to me either. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you're familiar with the uh, Major League uh, football drug testing right. policy. Not only do they suspend them for four games on first offense, but that's, they name the offenser, the offender. That's 25% of a season. That's 25% of the season. Uh, this 10-day suspension is 10 days or ten thousand dollars, or up to ten. Or up to ten thousand dollars. It could be a dollar. In other words, it could be a dollar. Uh, or, and they do not name the person. Uh, second offense in football is eight game suspension. That's half a season. No pay. That gets you where it hurts. I mean, there there is a difference in the approach between the National Football League. And I realize that Major League Baseball was at a disadvantage in trying to negotiate a new agreement with a contract already in hand. So they had kind of had their hands tied behind them. But in fact, what they did is a Band-Aid, and it doesn't really get to the problem. Would you think maybe they're not to first base, maybe they're just barely out of the batter's box with the... First step out of the box. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much. I just note that in the Commonwealth of Virginia, where I reside, our legislature, if a student athlete is caught with steroids, two-year suspension for many Two years. Well, the, the Olympic Committee has the best uh, policy as far as steroids are concerned. Two-year suspension for first offense, life suspension for second offense. Our feeling is this stops at the top down. We can't do this from the bottom up. We, they've passed laws and legislatures for kids. The, 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 it's, it's strict. It's got to start from the top down. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Thank Washington. you very much. Senator, I, I want to thank you for your eloquent statement. That when, it, when I hear from someone who has firsthand knowledge as a, uh, a baseball player and as well as a, a very well-respected senior member of the Senate, uh, I'm impressed by uh, what you've had to say to us. I want to just put out there for further discussion with you an idea that was suggested to me by a very a prominent person in the uh, athletic uh, field. And he suggested that maybe what we ought to do is have one standard, one standard for all sports and for all uh, sports, not only in the major leagues, the minor leagues, and at schools, something like the Olympic standard and have that uh, as a clear statement that uh, there are going to be severe penalties, maybe even suspension for forever uh, participating in the sports if there are numerous uh, occasions when they've caught, been caught. I, I don't want you to answer that now, but it's something I've been thinking about. I'd like you to think about it, and perhaps we can talk about it another time. Congressman, you know that would require an awful lot of changing of the laws that we now have. Yes, but laws can be changed if it's appropriate, and I want to discuss with you 
at some future time, whether it is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Senator, what, Senator what's your time scale? We have a vote in about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, do you have a couple more minutes? I, I have whatever you want. All right. Mr. Burton. Jim, how's Mary? She's fine, Dan. <laughs> you, you be sure to tell her we, we said hi. Uh, I really appreciate your testimony, and I'm not going to ask a lot of questions. I'd just like to ask if you were in a position where you could make decisions, what, what would be the steps that you personally would take to clean this mess up? Well, I would have been looking back a little sooner I, than I, I, I know, the current I mean, operation. Um, You've got to look forward, and you've got to at least get some kind of an idea where these records that are being set have come from. So there's got to be a date certain if you can find out, and I don't suggest that you do that today, find out from some of these key players. If they started in 1992 or 93 illegally using steroids, Wipe all of their records out. Take them away. They don't deserve them. Go ask Henry Aaron. Go ask the family of Roger Maris. Go ask all of the people that played without enhanced uh, <laughs> drugs. If they would like their records compared with the current records. Thank you. I, I, I sincerely believe one of the solutions is to get baseball's integrity back in keel is to look forward but not forget what's happened in the past. Well, I, I guess I didn't make my, my question real clear. What would you, uh, assuming you were commissioner, what, would you, what steps would you take to make sure that this sort of thing does not happen in the future? How do you stop it? Well, you, you, by, by making the penalty such that if you're caught, you're out of the game. So I mean, you, who, who would take the chance of losing $12 million a year if they were thrown out of the game, if they tested positive for any of the steroids, uh, and if they were randomly sampled? Uh, that's, that's the big key, to, to be able to randomly sample every player in Major League Baseball, and not just once but at the will of the major leagues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cummins. Yeah, just one quick statement. I, I want to thank you for your testimony. It was uh, indeed very, very moving. I, and, I, I, and there's only one thing that I wonder about, and when you say trust and verify, and you can answer this some other time, but you know, how, the question becomes, how long do you trust? Well, and that's, You're and about that's, at the end of your trust. Well, that's what I, I thought. Okay, that, then you answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Towns. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me also thank you, Senator, for your testimony. And I think that part of my question is um, uh, the question that was asked. But I'd like to take it just a little step further. Are you saying that the Congress should not take action at this time, uh, that we should wait and give Major League Baseball an opportunity to clear up their act? No, I'm not saying that. Congress can take action at any time. Uh, well, on the evidence presented today at this hearing and subsequent hearings, uh, I think this committee can put forward any kind of legislation they deem necessary to clean up the problems. You're going to hear some statistics today you're going to have a hard time believing from Major League Baseball. I mean, you're going to hear statistics that it's that the abuse is down to 1 percent. Now, that's hard for me to believe, knowing full well that a 150-pound right-handed hitting second baseman can hit the ball 425 feet to right center field for a home run. And I'm not naming any names. Uh, but it's impossible. The only person who could do that in my era of baseball was Mickey Mantle. And the only reason he could do it, he was stronger than almost anybody that played the game. But he was the only one who ever hit a ball into right center field. Maybe it's because they knocked the mound down five inches. But I know one thing, hitters are much stronger and the ball is much more souped up than it was 
in the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Well, I, want, I want to thank you, um, and I say we, I hope we leave this room uh, with new ideas and a cogent plan to stem the tide of steroids among our professional athletes as well as our young people. If we are to explore the dangers of these drugs and educate our young athletes, we need to hear from the right people. Mr. Chairman, I'm here today to help our younger people stay away from these substances. If we have any future hearings on this topic, please consider inviting these individuals that I'm going to mention. Their input is essential and could go a long way towards helping our young people avoid the temptation and dangers of this crippling drug. We should invite the Commissioner of FDA. We should invite Mr. John Walters, Director of the National Drug Control Policy for the United States of America, the Governor of the most populated state in the nation, Governor Schwarzenegger, who has indicated that he has used enhancing drugs and is now speaking out against them. I would like to hear from him. I think he has a lot to contribute. So, Mr. Chairman, on that note, I yield back. But I'm hoping that we do not stop at this point, but continue to move forward with these people that I think have information that we need in order to make a decision and make the proper decision. I yield back. Thank you very much. Mr. Chase. Thank you. Um, uh, yes. My colleague, Mr. Bunning, great to have you here. I think that one thing that Major League Baseball has done is done more to unite Republicans and Democrats in this Congress than anything else that's happened in the last 18 years because of the arrogance that you outlined. The letter you received uh, was from whom? Major League Baseball. Uh, wh who signed the letter? Well, I don't, well, I'd have to ask Steph. Is it, is it in front of you? Could we have a copy of that letter? Well, I only have the outline of the okay. policy. We would I, I think we would like a copy of that letter and would like to know who it was from. It was background in a memo. It wasn't a letter. It was a background memo. In your statement, I just want to clarify, because you talked about 30 days for the first suspension. It, it's 10 days for the first. It's, Correct. It's 30 for the second, 60 for the third, and for the fourth, one year. Um, and what we didn't know, and you clearly didn't know as well, is that it could be replaced with a fine. And I'm interested to know, uh, do you think that the reason they chose a fine was so that they then didn't have to publicize uh, that this player was being uh, uh, reprimanded or disciplined? Well, I think uh, they gave the opportunity of a fine because obviously it doesn't hurt. Somebody's making uh, six to eight or ten or twelve million dollars a year. When you're fining them ten thousand dollars or less for our first offense, it means absolutely nothing. But and there is no record of who that person is. And you clearly wouldn't know it necessarily. But if they're absent from the game, it would raise questions from the press. If they were suspended for ten days or thirty days or sixty days, we would clearly have a sense of what they were all about. Unlike football's program, mm -hmm. where you know who exactly has been suspended. Okay. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. See who seeks recognition. Mr. Owens? Mr. Sang? Jim, I'd just like to make a brief comment. Uh, I serve as the ranking Democrat on the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections, which is concerned about the safety of workers in the workplace. And although baseball players earn tremendous amounts of money, in the final analysis, baseball is a business and they are workers. And we are looking at a situation where the health and safety of every worker will be compromised if we allow the use of steroids by a few, because in order to remain competitive, everybody will have to do it. You cannot be competitive, stay in the sport unless it begins, unless you uh, compete on that basis. So we are jeopardizing the health of every worker eventually if we don't put a stop to this at this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a brief question. Senator, I appreciate you coming today. I'm from Detroit, so uh, you can uh, guess my allegiance to the Detroit Tigers. We're very proud to call you a former Detroit Tiger. I remember when you pitched the – I don't quite remember. I sort of read about it when you pitched the uh, – <laughs> Oh, don't <laughs> the date no yourself. For the Detroit Tigers. 
<laughs> but uh, let me say, in, in light of the uh, conversation and the uh, subject that uh, we're talking about today, I'm, I'm glad there are no Detroit Tigers on any of our panels here today. But also in uh, the Detroit area, of course, we have very strong unions there. And I'm just wondering, why has it taken, in your uh, opinion, the players' union such a long time to, uh, to address this? A union, in my mind, is an organization that tries to uh, help and protect other members. Do you have any comment on that, Senator? Uh, you'll be able to ask that question of Donald Fear. He's the um, executive director of the Major League Baseball Player Union. So I suggest that you ask him. Thank you. I will. Thank, thank you very much. Let me, let me just add, just because a player is summoned here today, it's a cross-section. We have some players summoned here today that's been outspoken against steroids, and we're proud to have all of them uh, uh, here. Mr. Sanders? Uh, Mr. McHugh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jim, Senator, great to see you. John. Um, always appreciate uh, your enlightened comments on so many subjects. I, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Cooperstown and listen to Jim Bunning uh, speak as he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And uh, anybody who heard that speech or knows of his reputation understands he's a a real straight talker, and uh, it's hard to think of anybody who has more validity on this issue, and really appreciate your being here. I just wanted to follow up briefly on my, uh, my young colleague who doesn't remember that no-hitter, I, I do, um, and comments about the, the Player Association of Major League Baseball. As you look at the situation now, how would you assess culpability for there not being a stronger steroids testing policy. Could you say it's equally responsible, of an equal failure between Major League Baseball and the Players Association, 80-20, just to give us an idea of where the, where the true landmine is? I think after the 94 uh, debacle, where we lost part of the season, lost the World Series, uh, there was a lack of attention paid by both the Player Association and management. Uh, and that's when it looks like steroids really got a hold in baseball. And everybody was looking for kind of a, uh, a rekindling of interest at the Major League Baseball level. And the home run looks like was the savior. And uh, Mark McGuire, who you will have here before you, and Sammy Sosa put on a home run hitting contest that wound up breaking babe or uh, Roger Maris's 1961 record and that rekindled uh, fans interest in Major League Baseball uh, and I think uh, maybe that might be the reason that there wasn't real hard scrutiny put on the players who were succeeding it hitting balls out of the ballpark faster than I've ever seen in my life. I always wondered why the pitchers weren't pitching inside a little more. Uh, because when someone hit a ball, you know, 480 foot, uh, a little few years prior to that, uh, they had to suffer some consequences if they did that. And uh, my, my feeling is that there wasn't a lot of attention paid, John. So the home run meant the dollars, meant the game. Well, take a look at the Major League Parks and, and what has come from that time forward. They've shortened the fences. The home run is a big part of the game. People don't really like to watch one to nothing or mm -hmm. two to one games. They'd rather it be 11 to nine. So I would say uh, that's pretty accurate. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Kucinich. I'll, uh, I'll have some questions of a later panel. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and uh, Mr. Waxman for holding this hearing. <laughs> Senator, let me thank you for your testimony. And it was certainly good to see you earlier this morning. I want to ask you, do you think that a strong anti-steroid use statement from the Baseball League and the Players Association with serious consequences for abusers would be helpful in stemming the tide among active players and would help to steer young people away from their use? 
I don't know about the, the latter part of your statement, but I know for sure if there was a joint statement between Major League Baseball and the Players Union and there were severe enough penalties involved in the use of those steroids at an earlier time, not, not on the fifth or sixth time, uh, yes, I think that would have a dramatic effect on the use of steroids at Major League Baseball. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Ross Lightning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, it's a pleasure to uh, see you again. And, uh, I know it, we all know you as uh, an American hero in uh, Major League Baseball, but maybe some of our members don't know that in my native homeland of Cuba, you are also a baseball <laughs> hero because you played uh, for many years in the uh, in the Cuban leagues in the off season. And uh, we uh, we thank you, and you're you're very much of a hometown favorite still in South Florida, where so many Cuban exiles. Uh, uh, are living now. Uh, you say in your statement uh, that uh, uh, that you would hope that the association, uh, the Players Association, and uh, uh, all of the uh, entities would take the necessary uh, rules and regulations so that Congress would not have to act and that the recommendations are not what we had hoped that, th that they would be. What role do you see then Congress uh, playing uh, in, this, in the uh, regulation of steroid use, understanding that uh, the unions are, are, are is such a powerful union, uh, what, uh, what can we do and how, how do we fit into that scenario? Well, there's been some suggestions made already. Uh, my suggestion is if, if you feel this committee and any other committee of the Congress feels that uh, Major League Baseball and the Player Association or Players Union does not comply strongly enough to our desire to wipe steroids completely out of baseball, then we ought to take it into our own hands and it's not going to be an easy thing uh, to change the labor laws of this land to make sure that we can affect a change in all professional athletics. I think you're going to have to do it that way. Make it the law of the land that all professional athletics are governed under this one uh, And you drug think policy. hearings such as, such as this one help further? Uh, I, I think it can, that. yes. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Let me note we have three, three votes on the House floor. Uh, the Obrey Amendment, the Hensarling Amendment, and then a rolled suspension uh, from yesterday. So when we go over there, we'll be doing three votes. When we come back, the rest of the voting for the day, I think, will be single votes on different uh, substitutes uh, uh, to the budget resolution. And at that point, we should be able to keep the hearings going continuously if we alternate the chairs. Mr. Burton and Mr. Shays have offered to help me to, with, with the uh, chair duties at that point. Uh, I'd like to see if anybody else would like to make an opening statement before we uh, go or any other comments and then Senator Bunning's going to have to. Anyone else wish to make it? Uh, Mr. Clay? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ranking Member Waxman, for holding this here. And I'll be very brief since the votes are on. And thank you, Senator, for being here today on this matter. Uh, as a fan of baseball, I, I hope today's hearing will serve as a forum to discredit some rumors and prove that the records attained by future Hall of Fame, Fame inductees are creditable. Uh, while the NFL randomly tests football players for steroid use, using punishments such as unpaid suspension to get their point across, the most impressive testing is within the Olympics. Olympic sports have the strongest drug testing program run by the independent U.S. Anti-Doping Agency athletes are subject to frequent unannounced year-round testing and, fir and uh, the first positive test brings a minimum two-year suspension. I commend Major League Baseball's effort to strengthen its steroid policy. However, it is strikingly clear that more steps need to be taken in order to send a clear message to players that using illegal drugs will not be tolerated. It is my hope that today's hearing will not only shed light on Major League Baseball's policy, but more importantly, educate the public about the dangers to youth who may be tempted to use anabolic steroids 
and ensure that adequate safeguards for the future are in place. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I'll save my questions for later, but I do want to make a brief comment that I think uh, my friend Jim Bunning's statement was one of the finest summations of this problem that I've heard, and I want to commend him. I want to also commend you for calling this hearing because I think this has given a, a, a very important wake-up call to Major League Baseball. Uh, as some of you know, our, my family owned and operated the uh, Knoxville Smokies AA baseball team and were involved with the team from 1956 until the early 90s. So this is very near and dear to my heart also. I grew up in baseball, although at a much lower level than, than Jim Bunning. But uh, I think this is very, very important here today. And I think also, though, that we should give Major League Baseball a chance to take some serious steps in addition to the actions that we take. I think that they will react positively, and I certainly hope they will, because this is a very serious problem for the young people of this country. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Van Hollen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, thank you for your excellent testimony. I'll, I'm going to be very brief. Um, during my 12 years in the Maryland Legislature, I had the opportunity to work with many people in raising awareness about the dangers of chewing tobacco, tobacco use for oral, oral cancer. And many of the baseball players in the Baltimore Orioles organization were terrific at helping get out the word. Hank Aaron has been a real leader uh, in that effort. And I think that effort shows that the players understand and when they're committed to doing it, can work to send signals and messages to our young people. And I think it's had an effect that this, the positions Hank Aaron and others have taken. And it seems to me we need an even higher level of commitment uh, to message sending to our youth uh, from Major League Baseball and the players, especially from the players who young people see. I have young children. I have two uh, young boys and a daughter. They're very actively engaged in sports. Uh, my 13-year-old tries to do 100 push-ups every night. He's very interested in being physically fit. And we may need to make sure that we're sending a message that in sports across the board, as you said, baseball or any other sport, you can't get ahead by taking these shortcuts. You can't get ahead by cheating. We can't send a message that sports figures are somehow above the law. And it's critical that the ball players themselves, those are, the, are, are, are engaged in this effort. So I thank you uh, for all your efforts to raise attention to this issue and, and call upon with my colleagues here, the ball players, uh, to get with it and start sending the right messages uh, to our youth. Thank you. Mr. Dent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Bundy, good to see you. As a representative from Eastern Pennsylvania, I want to congratulate you nearly 41 years after your perfect game on Father's Day in 1964. Uh, in your statement, you mentioned the federal antitrust exemption. Uh, if Major League Baseball uh, fails uh, to enact stringent policies on steroids, uh, do you think that we as a Congress should consider repealing that antitrust exemption that, in my state, uh, the team owners effectively used to extract over $150 million to pay for their stadiums in the cities of Philadelphia and Pittsburgh? Well, my personal feeling is that if you're going to grant an exemption to someone and they don't honor the exemption that they have and respect the fact that they have it, where Major League Football doesn't and Major League uh, Basketball doesn't and Major League Hockey never had it, then they should be held accountable for that exemption. Of course, it should be one of the things on the table if you're going to look at not reacting to this crisis that's before them. Thank you very much. Anyone, Mr. Rubin? Well, real first, one baseball question. What was that pitch that you threw to Mickey Mantle where he hit the ball to right field at home run? Which home run? Well, which pitch? <laughs> um, we know this is a very a serious issue. Baseball, I'm bought from Baltimore, Baltimore Oriole fan all of my life. And um, I went to a lot of the games. I've seen you pitch. But what I liked about your testimony, I liked a lot about your testimony, is bottom line, baseball is a game, and you talked about using steroids is cheating. And we do not want our national pastime, the sport that we love, to be considered a game where people can cheat, where can take an advantage of one over another. And it seems to me that now we have to come together, and this hearing will put the limelight. And I think help the commissioner. The commissioner is in a bit pretty 
bad position right now because he's got to pull the Players Association together. Maybe this will have the Players Association rethink their position because it seems we have to be able to get the facts on who is using steroids and who is not. But right now, a lot of the testimony out there from Conseco is Conseco's credibility versus someone else's credibility. And my question to you is what do we need to do now from a testing point of view, uh, a change in policy for baseball to get this, m this issue uh, worked on so we can start w worrying more about the game and who's going to win or lose and not about athletes using sports using steroids where that is cheating and illegal. Well, what you need to do is make it tougher and uh, than the policy that they have proposed, and you have to make it uh, so that if you use them and get caught, you're gone. And I agree with all that. And I think the Olympic testing is great, but I, I think we've got to move right away. How well, can we I, move right away from a well, legal they're, point Well, they're view? in the middle of a, a contract right now. A, a collective bargained agreement, and that puts uh, anonymous uh, job on Gotta on go. the Congress of the United States to change labor law. So it's it's much more difficult than it appears. Okay, well, thank you. We have to run and go vote. Thank you. Go vote, Senator Bunning. Thank, thank you, you so much uh, Thanks, for Tom. being with us. Thank you, Ms. Norton. We, we, we've got to go run to vote. Do it. Do, do, do. Go ahead. Well, the hearing is going to be in a recess for about a half an hour as members go. We have three items. At that point, we will go with our second panel, be ready to swear them in and move on to their testimony and questions. Thank you. As you can see, the committee recessed to allow members time to